the jungle. All right, everybody, what's going on? We are here in the building <laughs> of the Life Journey Podcast. We got a special guest on today. We, 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 we tapped in. We, we are in Houston right now. We are in Houston. We got uh, the lovely Christine Knightson on. How are you doing, Christine? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great up here in Rochester, New York. Finally warm. Not not 30 degrees no more, being bipolar weather. It's actually warm. <laughs> 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 it's hot out here already hot <laughs> how, how hot is it out there i don't know it's pushing the upper 80s 90s <sighs> <Boy. I> no <know>. and <laughs> <Man>, toasty <laughs> toast <Lisa. laughs> well you know on our show you know we just dive into talking about the life journey of where you are where you started off when you were a kid to where you are now and yeah, this a lot of listeners just want to hear like about people's story because everybody has a story, a very unique story. So yeah, let the let the crowd know a little bit about like you growing up as a kid and um what yeah, what was that life? What's your life like as you know the young Christine? Of course, yeah. Um thank you for having me by the way. Um uh -huh. I I grew up in Oklahoma City um with my mom and my brother pretty small knit family um yeah just like really I mean fun happy childhood I was involved in sports um track dance um I don't know it was fun um pretty like you know it was a good time and then I ended up um getting involved in um sports middle school and high school then I went to college and my undergrad degree ended up being in nursing okay. um yeah, and so that's kind of how my life opened up, um, and it took off from there. Awesome. So, talk a little bit about like I don't know, like high school. Like, what was it like going to high school out in Oklahoma and that whole experience? Of course, yes. Yeah. So, I don't know. My high school was a blast. I don't know. I was involved in like um, track. I was involved in like dance. Um, I think I worked a lot too. So mm -hmm. like. Um, like a lot of single um, parent households, things are really, really tight. And so I, I had a, I worked a lot in that area and that, I think that shaped me a lot, like just as a person and just like, that was a huge part of my high school experience. Um, and then on my free time, like I was either at practice, I was either on some football field or basketball, um, you know, at some basketball game and just, I don't know, enjoying life and, you know, it was fun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so like, I guess throughout that time, like, what made you choose? Uh, was it yeah, University of Oklahoma? Mm hmm Yeah. What made you choose? You know, yeah. Oh, oh, you. Um. Honestly, <laughs> I I came from, like, what is the biggest reason? I love the school. Like, I came from a like a my city that I was from was really small and I just wanted like a big school environment you know like a really big diverse environment so um I went to the school did a couple of tours and it just seemed like it fit um so yeah well I mean what is it like being a sooner oh I mean good people you know, we had the full divine nine there. Like it was a big campus, big football team, big football school. So it was fun. It was like a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So what was your? So I mean, you, you joined a, a sorority, correct? Yeah. And you know, I guess what 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 made you know a lot of people join for certain reasons. You know what what made you join uh, the sorority that you're about to name? I don't want to let everybody know yet until you. Oh. <laughs> I, well, I'm an AK, um, and I think a big part of why you join has to do with its national goals and national platform, as well with who is well as well as who you relate with on campus. Um, I think both parts play a huge role, um, and so for me, it was a bit of both. Um, I the platform and the service and what they stood for meant a lot to me and stood out to me, um, as well as like um, I connected with those women on campus as well um and the people that i crossed with as well so it was a good experience that's solid that's solid and yeah. through that time like in college i don't know like what 
what was your most what was your favorite college experience that like man if i can go back like that that was pretty dope i, I would replay that a hundred times Ooh, that's a good question Ooh, let me think um I would say like being a part of our step team was fun. Like I think like um, I was involved in like pageants and just like the step team on campus. And so like just kind of being a part of those experiences like really forced me to be out, push myself outside the box, especially at the pageants and like the interviews with the pageants and just kind of like forcing you to be like vulnerable um, mm -hmm. and just really put yourself out there. And then stepping was just fun. You know, we just it was just fun. <laughs> so. I would say those those are like I would say some of my highlights um, as far as like looking back if I could do it again yeah like a million times. So, so were y'all like were y'all like in the courtyard or something? Y'all just like <laughs> like it just stop the yard like everybody just stopped in the middle of the. You're and hilarious. Just, like that or was it just like you know at, at an event or at a party? We had like um, like stomp downs, so we had a lot of like. Um, like step shows where we had a big major step show on OU's campus. Then we had like a lot of competitions on other college campuses where everyone mm. would compete basically. Um, and so kind of like step offs. Um, and so we would like prepare for these, like prepare as a team and practice and then we would go and perform. So it was cool. Pretty awesome. So like you, like you, and you were like the leader basically of your group. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You are funny. That's what's up. That's what's <laughs> up. I don't know. I just us being like I don't know. See, I don't know. I, I just I can't imagine it in my head until I see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine it until I see it. So yeah. that no, that's gonna be awesome. Um. All right. So transitioning from college into your career path. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Like, um, I chose nursing as my undergrad degree. Um, best decision I've ever made. Like, I love nursing so i um you know completed nursing school worked as a nurse for um a couple of years and decided that i wanted to go back and get my master's um i continued to work as a nurse but um you know just went ahead and got that master's degree and um, as a nurse practitioner um, a family nurse practitioner and so yeah i love every bit of it like it's been so worth it and like really really rewarding that's awesome that's good right. Oh, was there anybody in your family that wasn't nursing at all? Or was anyone that like, is there a particular reason why you say, hey, I want to choose nursing? Or yeah. is it just... Oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so really, like, I chose nursing. You know how they have those, like, personality quizzes that they give you in high school and, like, college to kind of figure out what you want to do? It used mm -hmm. to always pop up. But honestly, I never thought it would be a good fit. And I didn't really have anybody in my family that was in the medical field. Um, but I just kind of, because it just kept pop, pop, popping up, I just decided to kind of look into it and I ended up joining this like, um, medical job, like a camp basically, um, for kids, kids and adults with special needs. And that was it. It was like a light turned on. Like I did it as kind of like this side college job and just to kind of see if the medical field was for me. And I mean, it changed my life. Like from then I just... I just dove right in um, and didn't look back. I always knew that I, quote unquote desk jobs weren't for me or office jobs or business. <laughs> like I kind of knew like those things weren't a really good fit. And I always knew I really wanted to help people um, mm -hmm. on like an intimate way, in an intimate way, like every day. I wanted to feel that, um, feel like I was connecting with people and helping people. Um, and that is really what led me to it. Cause I was always like, even as a kid, like volunteering with like, um, I don't know, like nurseries and stuff and just always working with kids. I always knew that helping people was the route I wanted to go. Um, but once I chose nursing, like it was just a perfect, perfect fit. That's awesome. Yeah. Now dive into, okay, so you got into nursing, got your degree, mm -hmm. went on these trips. Talk about, I believe it was Honduras, correct? Yeah. Talk about your trip to Honduras and that whole experience. That's, I think that's pretty amazing. Like you got a chance to do that. And you were talking Spanish. Yeah, talk about it. Yeah, I um, I got to go out to Honduras. It was about five weeks or so. I went down there and it was amazing. Like I got to work with like um, kids down there. And like, a lot of my role down there was like, it, honestly, education. 
Um, mm-hmm. And just like that was like the need that they had, and it was so rewarding. Like I like I got to like um, live with one of the families down there, one of the professors down there, and just really like be. They took me in like as part of their family, um, mm-hmm. and like I used I I walked to school with them every day. Like spent the day with the kids. Like the kids were just. It was just like life changing. Like the kids were always just just to learn about their culture, learn what they experience, learn what they go through every day. For them to be so grateful for even like the smallest things and to see what they overcome every single day, like walking an hour to school, like things like that and that hot heat, you know, rain, just whatever. It was just, it was humbling um, and just really rewarding. Like I would definitely, definitely go back. Um, And Spanish of course was very difficult because there were no translators and so it was like some people spoke English, you know, some people spoke both languages, but oh, it was basically like, it was definitely a challenge of like, but like, it was a good challenge. Like, I loved it. I definitely came out stronger than I went in <laughs> in my Spanish. Yeah. That's the best way. To, um, I mean, like, so when you came in, did you feel like your Spanish was like decent or was it like, uh, man, I'm up to, I'm in trouble? <laughs> it was like, okay. It was decent. Um, going in, it was decent. And I took some Spanish courses in undergrad, so it was like decent. Um, but I, I needed, I re- quickly realized getting there, like, I needed to, you know, pick it up <laughs> quickly. Yeah. Like, I had to, to sort of kind of, you know, be able to make an impact and to be able to help. I needed to pick it up. So, but it was good. Like, it was good. They were very patient. Very patient. Like, you know, so. That's good. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Anytime I went down to, like, Columbia or Panama, it, sometimes I'll get looked like I'll speak it and then like, I'll get looks because like, I'll say something backwards and you know how like you gotta put one word in front of the other um that to make it make sense for them yeah so like I'll say it that way and I'm like como yes <laughs> you como? get that a lot como yeah <laughs> Monday <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, funny funny times but that's awesome though that like you got a chance to experience that and like what would you say to folks that like are listening that you know, they've been at the edge of their seat to do something like that, but they're like, um, just gonna stay home and just do, you know, not take the leap of faith. What would you say to someone like that that can like, hey, like do this? What would you say about that? If it's on your heart to do it, do it. Like life is way too short to look back on life and not have done what you felt passionate about doing. Like, um, cause these experiences like there might, be, might not be enough the time where you can like have that time or have that resource or have the option to do it. Like if it's in right. front of you, like do it. And even if it's not in front of you, there's a way, like there is a way, you know, like there are programs out there that are reputable. There are, you know, programs in like undergrad programs and college, there's volunteer programs you can do it in. Um, if it's something that's on your heart to do, like, I say go for it, like, because it's so rewarding to learn from a different culture. It's so rewarding to be able to give back in that way. Um, and it's different going out and doing it in a different country. Like, and if that's something that's on your heart, like, go for it, you know? Okay. Like, it's always a way. And what program was that through? That um, that was called Shoulder, Shoulder to Shoulder. It was a nonprofit organization. Um, and they basically work in the city of Kamaska, um, Honduras, and they basically like do um, medical services and medical needs down there as well as education needs. Um, and some people actually work down there like pretty much full time on a full time basis for up to a year or longer. And then they also have people that come like short term for like a week at a time, like from their medical needs and they basically build a clinic there and then um, stay for about a week or so then like medical schools, medical students, doctors, physicians, nurses, they go down there for a week at a time. Um, and it's, it's the, that program is phenomenal. Like um, I will say also like be very diligent about finding a program that's reputable because there yeah. are a lot of scams out there. That's a big yeah. part of it too. Like don't go out of pocket spending thousands and thousands of dollars like find some go out try to do your best of research finding a good reputable program because um that makes a huge difference about your experience and just it's expensive you can be you know um so that's my biggest advice and can you name the website one more time for everyone who's listening of course it's called shoulder to shoulder um and um it's located in kamaska honduras awesome awesome mm-hmm. wow yeah. That so that experience coming out of that and then 
you know, you made a transition to Houston. Yes. Um, so like talk about that experience and like the whole the whole transition and like the, the new things that have, that have come up. Yeah, like first of all, I love Houston. <laughs> it's amazing. The city is huge, so much like food and culture and I don't know, especially food. Um, different diversity of people, like so much there's always something to do for any type of person. I love Houston. Um, so much opportunity down there, down here. Um, and yeah, now I work as a nurse practitioner. I work in like a family practice setting. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just really love nursing, like everything about it. Like I, I love what I do. Um, the people that I work with now, like um, I work with different settings, different types of people. So um, of all like social economic backgrounds, basically in like, um, but yeah, in different settings from kids to like geriatric age, um, in like a clinic setting. Right. Yeah. And your your time there, I mean, going back to the Spanish thing, yeah. you had to learn, you had to speak Spanish at one of the clinics you were working at. Yes. So like, I oh, definitely is. end up using that Spanish for like my work down here. <laughs> so like, um, my first job coming out of school was like eighty percent. I mean, almost 90% Spanish speaking population. Like that is my, and it was absolutely amazing. Like just working with them day in and day out, like they challenged me and the Spanish that I used in, in Honduras, like definitely <laughs> helped me to be able to like carry that over into my job. So like um, definitely something that I'm passionate about is like um, minority communities and like disadvantaged communities. Um, which is a big reason why um, I learned Spanish and, and continue to work on my Spanish is because that's like a big passion of mine, um, like underserved in minority communities. That's powerful. That's powerful. And a lot of folks that, you know, they talk again, I hear a lot of people talk about like, oh, I want to like help out here and do this and that. And, and these are people that like have it good, that are in a really good life, but like they don't put the effort in. Uh, because maybe they just don't know, or maybe they're just, like not interested enough. But once you get a chance to experience it, or get a chance to work with folks like that, like man, like you, your 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 heart just like melts. <laughs> yes, yes, it's like yeah, it's very special. It's very special, and just the gratitude behind it, and um, that gratitude behind people. You know, when they, you know, when you serve, and just I don't know, it's just when you serve, it's just. It's very, very rewarding. So um, yes. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So next, so some, so one one thing is, how could someone get involved in? I don't know. Like obviously, you got to go to school for nursing and stuff. But like, I don't know, getting involved in that type of field, on the process to get there, and the commitment of what it takes. Because yeah. I've been seeing a lot about the COVID-19 and yeah, nurses on the front line. So like, mm -hmm. like you know, a war against the disease. Like, so what, yeah, kind of let people know like about what it takes. Yeah, of course. Um, so the biggest thing is that you um, get your undergrad degree in nursing. There's also an associate's degree as well. So there's two different options to become an RN, but the end result is the same, you become an RN. Um, I like to tell people it depends on like where you are in life. Um, some people come, a lot of people come later in life. They have families, they have full-time jobs. They're trying to decide between what program to take. A, and that's what's difficult about nursing. There's so many different routes. Um, so I think the first thing is just kind of picking the route that fits your lifestyle and fits where you are the best. Um, I highly recommend going for your RN. Um, and then um, that, the traditional RN degree is about four years. Um, and then once you, it's nursing school, a lot of times it's, um, very, can be very intimidating. Um, you have a lot of like prerequisite sciences and then the nursing school itself can be pretty intimidating. Um, but I, it's so doable, like so, so doable. I recommend getting someone that's already been through it, getting a mentor that's in it, like anything you can do your research, find the best school for you. Um, but it's so doable. And once you get in, there's so many, you're, you're almost like a family going through nursing school because you're all going through it together. <laughs> it's like this, like, it's just like this challenging program that you're going through every class with your peers together. Um, and you come out with some really close friends. Um, and then, yeah, like if you, 
you know, then you decide what field you want to go into. And there's so much variety from teaching to kids to labor and delivery. There's so much to do once you graduate. It's so rewarding. If that's what you want to do, it's very rewarding. Um, and then after you can decide if you want to get your master's, like I got my master's as a nurse practitioner. Um, and that's an additional two to three years, depending on what program you go in, go into. Um, or you can choose education. Um, you can choose um, clinical nurse specialist. You can choose anesthesiologist as a nurse. So there's so many routes. Um, take your time and make sure that it's something that you really want to do. Because like you mentioned, like there it's, it's like rewarding, but it's also tough, you know, like and you got to be in it for the right reasons um, when things get tough, like around this season, like around COVID season. And so but if that's your goal um, and your passion, like it's so doable and find someone that's in it and go for it. Powerful words, powerful words. So anybody's encouraged, man, like and you've been holding back on, on pulling the trigger, like, oh, let's go do it. Take your yes. time and. and you know, go go make sure you study to be able to make an impact in the world. Yes. Uh, yeah. So what's something, what's a quote? What's one of your favorite quotes you could leave the crowd with? That's a life lasting quote. Ooh, Ooh you're throwing the questions on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me think. Hmm. To be honest with you, you might have stumped me just now. I don't have a quote like off the top of my head that I can just like spit for you. <laughs> this is from a very like honest place. Mm -hmm. um, but I can say something that I live by is um, like truly like living in your passion. Like that's really important. Like going after your passion, creating the life that you want um, is important. And so I think that's something that I just that's a theme that I go by. Um, and also investing in yourself is very, very important, whether that's reading, whether that's like podcasts, whether that's like mentors. I would say those two things are like, if I could get tips or like common themes that I like live by, I would say those are like something that I highly recommend and push people to do. Because um, life is too short to just be going, just, just to go through life and not serve your purpose to just kind of live day in and day out the nine to five. All right. It's true. Investing in yourself, constantly building yourself up. What's three books that you would recommend? Ooh, that's a tough question. I would say, hmm. <laughs> I would say The Power of Vulnerability is one of my favorite books by Brene Brown. Um, I would say, Boundaries is a phenomenal book. Um, it's written mm. by two psychiatrists, like two psychologists. That is phenomenal. Um, ooh, what's another good book? Um, top favorite books. I would say if you're looking into like, I would say something that's really been was really helpful for me is like Rich Dad Poor Dad finance book. It's a really good like book to like dive into and like learn about finances and just kind of like the mindset behind it. I think that's a really good book too. There's so many good books. I'm kind of a, <laughs> I love reading. So it's kind of hard to narrow down to three books, but if I could narrow it down at the moment, those three would be really, you know, those are really good. <laughs> I got you. That's what's yeah. up. Solid books for sure. I finally finished the multiply book. <laughs> oh, nice. We finished it. Yeah, it got nice. intense. And I was like, oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm reading um, Atomic Habits by James Clare. So, I have that book. I haven't started yeah. reading it. Oh, okay. Is it pretty good? It's really good. I love it. For anyone that's interested, good. It's a tiny little book. It, it looks interesting on the outside, so it makes it look so. And it ends interesting reading on the inside. So, so yeah, <laughs> check it out. Um, favorite restaurant in heat. In, in, okay, let's do two. Mm -hmm. Favorite restaurant in Oklahoma, uh -huh. favorite restaurant in Houston. Ooh. Favorite restaurant in Oklahoma. That is a really good question. So my favorite spot, this is gonna sound, hey, it is what it is. I used to go to the casino and get all, um, all unlimited crab legs. <laughs> 
it's very random and not Oklahoma like, but that was my favorite spot no, to go. My best smart. friend every year, very smart, all actually. the time. Um, very and smart. so yeah, we would literally just go for that. And then um, in here in Houston, it's same thing, like shellfish, so crawfish all day, BBs. Pretty much any place I'll take it, but any kind of seafood boils down here, that's it. That's my go-to every time. Yeah, so you, you are <laughs> a seafood, you seafood person for sure. All day. <laughs> like that casino, so you said you went to the casino. So like I'm guessing like, cause I know in Vegas they do it where the cafe or the, the cafe or whatever, it's like 50 bucks and then you just get whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Was it like, so yeah, that's what you did. Yep. It'll yeah. be like 30, 40 right. bucks, and we just would stay for hours. <laughs> this, is we share this, is this is knowledge. This is knowledge. Man. This is it. <laughs> knowledge, man. What, I mean, what's special about Crawford? Like, what's special about it? Everything is special about it. Where do I start? <laughs> like, the seasoning, um, the experience. So, you know, like, usually you have it, you get this big bowl of it and you just kind of dig in. So like, it's like this experience. Each one, you know, it's like exciting. Each one is very exciting to eat. You got the different flavors. Usually you have it with a really good drink and with friends on a patio. It's a whole experience, you know? We have a you whole season, crawfish season. <laughs> you from like Baton Rouge though. Like, how, how, how did you get so like ingrained into I'm just messing with you. <laughs> That's what's up, though. Crawfish, my she, folks, did she introduced me to crawfish? I've never had it before. Um, such an amazing, it's really, it's really good. It's really good. Um, definitely, I would suggest to try it. So, whoever is a seafood head, like, or hasn't tried it yet, make sure y'all go try it. Yeah. <laughs> and then one last thing, gotta hit up, gotta talk about tips, though. Gotta talk about tips, though. You almost forgot about tips. <laughs> Okay, there's this cookie place down here, Tip Treats, and it's fire. They can deliver the cookies to you. You can go pick it up. They sell them individually. You can like mail them to friends for their birthday. They they give it with like ice cream, milk, balloons. I mean, it's just this amazing cookie shop down here and the cookies are fire. I mean, cookies, fire. <laughs> so yeah, you can't forget about tips. <laughs> Man, that is, that's deep, yeah. All right. I gotta get. I gotta. I gotta order some. I might. Just, I might tell them like freeze it and then ship it or something. Because they that's actually just, have that option too. <laughs> yeah, I have to do it. Then I will do. That's fine. Um, anything else you want to leave the crowd with that uh, that's listening? I mean, this is an awesome like interview, like podcast interview. Like, it's some not great knowledge. Here. Anything else you want to leave them with? Um, if nursing is your passion, like. I just, I meet, I meet so many people that say they're gonna do it and then they wait. And they say they're gonna do it and they wait. They let the application process get in the way. They let the schooling get in the way. Um, they let their family, you know, they say it's because of their family or certain life circumstances, which is so totally understandable. But um, I highly recommend, like, if it's your passion to go for it. Um, it's such a rewarding field. Um, and I don't, I mean, it's just such a rewarding field and there's so much you can do with it. It's so diverse. like go for it like don't let any circumstance like hold you back like there's per time programs there's online programs there's always a way there's mentors that are happy to help there's blogs so like go for it mm. yeah real talk make sure y'all hey make sure y'all um go do your research do your due diligence um takes time to become a nurse it's not a thing you can do overnight. You can't look at an online course and try yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> Very true. take time. But make sure y'all, you know, if you're interested, definitely dive into it. Christine, thank you so much. I don't know if you want to let people um, let them know like about your um, social media platforms or anything. If you want them to follow you, um, if, if you want to name it, if not, it's cool. Of course, yeah, of course. Um, it's called um, underscore just Chris twenty two, um, and that's my um, that's my um, name of my Instagram account. So yeah, of course. And if y'all have any questions like about nursing or just to ever need tips, like I'm more than happy to help. Right, and that's good stuff. You uh, know. Oh, and one last thing that I want to talk about with Christine, like she has a great group of like keeping yourself around a great group of people um, yeah. that. Are always uplifting you so like she has a great group of friends that like everybody's crushing it and what they're doing and 
yeah, like having a great group of folks around you that's in your circle. So, I mean, before you, before we sign off, talk about that, like your that importance of that. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Like, I I firmly believe two things: like the books you read, the way you invest in yourself now, and the people you're around now is where you'll be five, ten years from now. Like the people that you're around, and like the people. My friends are phenomenal. I mean, just phenomenal. Like they are driven they're wise they support me like we have like genuine friendships you know and like i think having that network and that connection with people is huge like in every season like you're going to need that in nursing school you're going to need that whatever your goals and dreams are like and i think having a solid group of people around you will give you the advice you need like they'll enhance you and push you to reach your goals like they'll be there for you when things get hard like um it's just very very important like to have a solid group of people around you and then it also pushes me like every day i'm when i talk to my friends about their goals i'm like wow like what else can i do because my friends are out here doing it you know like um and there's no comp competition there's no like envy it's just all love and just support you know yeah, yeah. that's awesome man well thank you so much for coming on the show like that it was it was amazing. Folks, make sure you are, you know, shoot her follow. If you have any questions about nursing, um, any questions about that, like make sure you hit her up. Uh, thank you so much, Christine, for being on the show. Hey, we definitely gotta have you back on at some point um, during the year, next year. But yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin Gauze. To find out more, and to follow the journey, visit Quentin's Instagram at QGauze or our business page at iron underscore visuals. For full recaps of the show, find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Thank you for tuning in.
to get started. started. 